Hey guys, Dave from Dave's Boy Shopworks here, and in this episode, we are going to be going back into the differential of my 67 Dodge Dart. Some of you might remember a short video I put out. Uh, I pulled the diff cover off about a month ago, and the brand new gear oil was just full of silver metal. The diff has been screeching itself to death. So, drove that long enough to drive me crazy enough. I ordered in some new gears, some 456s to replace the 488s. Uh, not that I don't like the 488s, they are badass gears. And I can still drive on the highway with my TKO 600 5 speed. Um, but uh, the 456s were where I wanted it to be at the end of the day anyway, so that was the end result plan. It's just happening about a year sooner than I'd planned on it. I was, I can't drag race the 488s the way they are, so I'm never gonna find out how good or how fast uh, I can push the dart with those gears in it. Um, but long story short, uh, I'm videoing this on my cell phone tonight. I don't have my GoPro with me, and this is just the first part of the video. Now I'm at work, and they've requested I don't film anything with you know identifying factors of you know any company name so and and i fully respect that 100 percent they they allow me to work here in my evenings on my own stuff so i'm not going to rock the boat um so what i'm going to end up doing this video is going to be a little bit different you're not going to see me pulling everything apart but i will come back and revisit uh steps along the way and hopefully we all get something out of this uh i know that i have to rebuild the uh the limited slip in the car as well it's uh it's an original like 73 or 74 dodge uh, sure grip style, cone style, uh, we'll say posi, and it's starting to uh, wear my tire on the driver's side more than the passenger side, so that's just showing me it's time, it's time to uh, rebuild that. Um, we're going to go through the procedure on that at my friend's machine shop because it's not a straight up replacing clutches. Um, we got to mill off some of the back side of the cone and make shims, but I'll, I'll go through all that with you as we go. But here goes, this is a long enough intro for me, so I'm going to get the car up in the air on the hoist, I'm going to get the differential fluid out of it, and bring you back for a quick hey hey. Alright, so this is kind of what I'm talking about here, this is the driver's side quarter panel, and you can see it's got a nice peppering of burnout rubber all over it, quite happy, and I'll show you the passenger side. Here is the passenger side. It is literally nearly clean. And I did notice this about, well, I wanna say last summer, but I didn't get much drive time in because I just got the car put back together. Didn't really put two and two together until I changed out the tires and got thinking about it. I'm like, oh, it might be a little bit of wear, but after putting the brand new rubber on the back and doing a few burnouts with the car, I can tell a huge difference just in the tires themselves. Um, so before I ruin one tire and have one good tire, it's time to fix this up so it does things correctly. All right, guys, so here it is. Car's back down on the ground. Uh, since I have rear disc brakes, I can put the car on the ground with the wheels on it, the disc brakes holding the axles in place. I also have the uh, side adjusters uh, inside the axle and they are kind of guiding the axle shafts so they're not just flopping around and destroying my bearings or anything. And the car is just getting pushed from here on out. I just have to push it out of the shop is all. But, you know, I'm kind of glad when you take the initiative and you think, maybe I should stop driving. Because then you see things like this. That's not supposed to be loose. Or that one. Oh, he's tight. Oh, he's loose. Or him. Or him. Him, 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 him. So, right around every single one of those are loose. So, in case you're wondering, well, well, there's your screw up, man. You didn't tire, torque them down. Honestly, check the video of me rebuilding the dart. You can see me torquing it down. All like three times I did it, you can see me torquing it down. I don't missteps i don't screw around with that that has to be done i make a nice smooth surface clean any burrs off of it torque them down usually some blue thread locker uh, most manufacturers uh, in the early days didn't use it they just torque them down a speck and called her good 
I've put this together with and without, and this is the first time a set has come apart. But with the amount of vibration coming out of there, I can honestly tell you that, yeah, um, I can see them all vibrating loose. And I mean, I've been torturing it. I've been burning tires. I've been going crazy. Um, I don't think that explains my backlash issue. I really still can't explain it because I, I checked the backlash again when uh, uh, just now here. And I'd set it back to like eight. Uh, about a month and a half ago, I think it was uh, late May, mid-May maybe. And uh, anyway, I set it back tight again because it was at like 52 thou. It was at 15 thou. So the gears, I think, are just grinding themselves apart. Now, I'll show you the gear oil here too. This is nice. So this is the gear oil after about a month and a half, maybe two months. And I mean, honestly, I'm not driving it every day. I'm only driving it like once, maybe twice a week because I can't stand the noise. That is as silver as the stuff I pulled out before. So silver, you can actually see my hand in it. Like, look, look at how much metal has gone through. And the bearings all look good. That's the best part. So as I was just saying, the bearings all look good. Literally, um, I feel like I'd run, aside from the amount of metal that's gone through them, to visually look at them, aside from a little bit of impregnated metal on the cups, I'd run them. The pinion feels smooth as silk. There's no play in it. Um, I, I'm blown away. It's literally, I'm suspecting a mismatched gear set was boxed up. Does it happen often? No. Um, the only time I ever ran into it was when I had a customer bring me a mismatched gear set that he had stockpiled a bunch of parts and, mi and mixed them up. So, no. Is it a common thing? No. Have I heard of it? Sure, but we hear of lots of things. It's the only thing that actually fits for the amount of work that I've done to this rear axle. Um, so I'm gonna strip the gear off. It's pretty much garbage. I might keep it just for nostalgia maybe. I don't know, I like my broken parts bench. And uh, then I'm gonna uh, split up the carrier uh, so I can get the sure grip taken apart. So basically this is it. We're gonna unscrew these guys. They're all left-hand thread on this unit and they should have an L. Yep, there's an L written on it, L. Anyway, we're gonna unscrew those. Then we have to take these guys off. They're regular right-hand thread. These are the carrier hold downs. All eight of these guys. Once that happens, I can pull the carrier off and I can catch the springs and the plates that are in there. Um, there they are, the springs and plates. And make sure they don't go anywhere. They're not going to. Under tension uh, from tightening it down is only well, it's not as much as you would think. And then I can pull out the side gears, that's the pinion gears, the side gears, and get the cones out that I need to get to. So I'll split it all down and spread it all out and show you. All right, guys, so here it is. This is the carrier side with the crown gear. And inside here, you can see it's got a little bit beat up. The metal is a little rough. If we flip over the cone, Again, it's kind of beat up. I think that's where our failure point is starting to happen. Because if you look at the other side, that looks just about as brand new as it can get. And same thing inside the passenger side. Look at that. So I don't know why it means the passenger side. It's probably just making the passenger side unload by the driver's side grinding against itself and making it slip that way. I, I can assume that. All my brand new bolts are still holding nicely. They look good. I'm probably going to replace them anyway. Um, but I'm going to get these guys cleaned up. What ends up happening is here is the side gear, right? Looks good. And this is the cone. And in the cone, you can see we've got splines as well. They match up with the, with the side gear. We've got these curved conical, if you look at it, it is a cone and it's got the Oh, almost a gear winding around it, I guess you'd call it, a, a tooth count of some kind. And it goes inside, and when the tire spin, one side spins, it ramps up, and it grabs, grabs the whole carrier. You can't, I can barely turn that one. And the more you force it, the less you can turn it. That's where these springs come into play. They force the, uh, gears apart and keep everything in a happy relation. 
So I'm gonna box these, uh, clean them up a little bit, box them up. And that's the simplicity of uh, the Chrysler Sure Grip. The later generation ones, the early generation, did have clutches you could replace. But uh, this is what we have to work with. This is what we're gonna fix up and we're gonna make it right. So I'm gonna box it up and off to the machine shop. If you guys don't get to see that, then I will definitely uh, bring it back and give you a detailed uh, showing of what everything looks like after it's all machined. Now that you see what it looks like before it's been machined. Well, on that note, guys, um, hope you're enjoying this little uh, video. I don't know how it's gonna edit out yet, but cross fingers. And uh, we'll get these parts all cleaned up. And hopefully, we can get to installing my 456s. I think I'm gonna order up some new uh, crown bolts and a couple of their odds and ends just to make the job a little nicer. Uh, but for now, I've gotta get this uh, car out of the shop and get it parked in our back uh, backyard for a few days while I get this, uh, these parts here over to the machine shop and get some magic happening. All right, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good night.